For over 40 years, the engineering and design of the BMW 5 Series has been synonymous with success. It's the hallmark of style, innovative engineering, and luxury. This beauty is the all-new 2022 BMW 530i. The exterior of the new BMW 5 Series sports a cleaner surface design. The most striking feature, of course, is the new BMW kidney grille design with re-sculpted headlamps. You can also choose from a BMW 4, 6, or 8-cylinder engine, and they all feature BMW's latest twin-power turbocharging technology, which incorporates a single twin-scroll turbocharger. Inside, you get standard BMW's Live Cockpit Professional, intuitive technology like the digital instrument cluster and central information display touchscreen delivers seamlessly integrated entertainment, navigation, safety features, and much more. Today, we're headed to the LSU Beach Volleyball Stadium to take a ride with LSU Beach Volleyball coach Russell Brock. In just five years, Coach Brock and the Tigers have also been synonymous with success. And in that short time, LSU Beach Volleyball is now among the elite programs in the nation. It's time to get to know Coach Brock a little better. It's time to go cruising with coaches. How we doing, Coach? Well, thank you. All right. Hey, I don't know if the seat's adjusted, but there's all kinds of well, we could knobs. Try. We and I bet you can oh, figure it out. Look at that. That's nice. Leg room. There you go. Appreciate there you go. It. No problem, man. How you doing? I'm doing well. I heard uh, I heard it was business attire, so I wore the nice tank and the shorts with belt loops. Absolutely. So that's, that's as classy as we get Looking over here. sharp. Looking sharp. Absolutely. You got to dress for the job, that's right? That's right. Well, look, man, we're just going to go out and cruise around a little bit. And, uh, you know, the main thing is I've met you a couple of times, obviously, but it's kind of a chance for me to get to know you a little bit better. And hopefully fans know you a little bit better. They certainly know what you guys have been doing here of late, which is uh, winning uh, matches and winning a lot of them. That's what we've been trying to do, just get on the map and represent our athletic department well. And it's been it's been fun to, to build a program from the ground up and kind of get on campus and pitch in with gymnastics and you know all these other great spring sports with baseball and softball and track and field to you know try and uh, bring LSU some some more glory. Well I tell you what you didn't wait uh, you didn't wait very long to get on the map and be right there in the mix of things I mean it has been extraordinary to watch number one just just you know the student athletes that are coming here that you know LSU is a beach volleyball school the facility I mean all the things that have happened that you know, I guess as fast as you're moving, it probably seems like it's all happened in the blink of an eye. It, you know, it is hard to kind of wrap your your mind around. I think the, the one thing that, that kind of helps me understand how long it's been is when I see pictures of my own kids when we, <laughs> when we moved to town. And I'm like, man, they've changed a lot. But, you know, it does feel like, you know, we've just started. And, um, you know, even this class that just graduated that was a great class, that, you know, for them to be able to be here for five years and, and they were here when we were nothing. And now, you know, as they're leaving, they're leaving a program that, you know, people know across the country, not just, you know, on campus. So it's it has been, um, you know, in some ways it's been a, a while and in some ways it's been really quickly. And, you know, for all of it, for, for both of them, we're grateful for everything that we've been able to accomplish. Welcome to this this BMW, the ultimate driving machine. The great thing about it is it's got all the entertainment. So I ask all of my guests, whatever tunes you're into, like what, what, what kind of sets the mood? You get behind the wheel, you gotta drive, go watch a player, go meet a player's family, whatever the case may be. What are we going to? Yeah, I got a whole selection here. Yeah, well for me, it's, uh, you know, I, I tend to gravitate towards, you know, just some praise and worship music. All right, know, we're, a let's little, see. A little something, we can figure out how to run this thing. This is fancy, it's nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna keep my eyes on the road. <laughs> right. So you kind of let me know, I'm gonna go slowly here. You let me know when I hit something that, you know, they got so many channels. They There's, do. Kurt Franklin, I don't mind that. All right, there we keep go. Keep us moving. There we go. Let's see, make sure everything, yeah. Uh oh. So, I have never been, I've driven by, but I've never had the fortune to take in the Texas Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, moved to, I, I grew up in Kentucky, moved to South Carolina, lived in Georgia. So, you know, I was, I was exposed as a young man to the, you know, the Atlantic coast, so sure. to speak, the East Coast. 
fell in love with the Gulf Coast and, uh, you know, everywhere on the Florida Gulf Coast to the Panhandle, Alabama Gulf Coast, you name it. Um, so what's the Texas Gulf Coast like? Am I missing out on something by not getting over there? Um, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> um, it's interesting because, you know, when the Mississippi River hits the Gulf, if you're on the east side, you've got some nice clean crystal clear blue water white sandy beaches and if you go on the west side where the current goes mm -hmm. then you're going to get some you know some dirty brown you know hard packed sand and uh and those are the beaches i mean galveston beach was the one that was closest to where we grew up and we'd go down and we'd have fun and you know you'd pick the tar off your feet before you went home and um, you know, wash the foam away, watch out for the jellyfish, but it's, you know, it's a beach and it's fun. But as far as comparing it to, you know, these great uh, beaches along the Emerald Coast, I think you're, um, you're going to be disappointed unless you have your expectations pretty low. The cities are fun, they're great and historic uh, along the coast, but, you know, as far as just setting up your beach chair, putting up your tent, you're gonna probably uh, sweat a lot and um, you know have to brush a lot of dirty sand off you and the <laughs> water's really warm but um, you know it's it's about the people not necessarily the coast but yeah not not the best view I'd say I got you I got you so maybe worth going over checking out the city checking out what uh, each of the little beach area towns have but maybe not spending a week planning to be on the beach every day all day if you're gonna go east or into the texas coast i just recommend just go ahead and head up into destin and fort walton and um, gulf shores and go along that route for sure it's speaking, about the same amount of distance speaking of gulf shores you guys just got back from there on another ncaa run uh, you know it looks like i haven't had the opportunity to take it in Number one, it looks like it is a great event, and I know you guys were probably happy. And it was interesting, I was in Auburn covering baseball with right. Bill Franquez after game three on Sunday, We actually, or Saturday, excuse me. We actually stayed around in the press box and watched the first part uh, of that match, I guess, at like 5, 5.30, whatever time it sure. was. And it looked like Tiger fans, as they tend to do, took over Gulf Shores in that event. It's you know, it's, it's a beautiful beach, as we've talked about. The event is a lot of fun, um, but absolutely, the LSU faithful, they, they make that event run. I mean, the beach volleyball is fantastic. It's the best teams across the country that come and play. But, you know, the energy, year in and year out, is provided by the purple and gold faithful that, that kind of flood into that area, and they're loud, and they're excited, and. You know, we do our best to give them something to cheer about, but um, you know that's what—that's honestly what makes the event, and we're we're so proud of that part uh, of that NCAA championship. Well, of course, as we said, LSU beach volleyball now on the map. Uh, I got a few more questions about it, but I can't go any further if I don't mention the fact that the awards keep on coming. And earlier this week, uh, first time ever award handed out across the country. And, and, and it's coming here to Baton Rouge and LSU. What an amazing, amazing accolade for two of your student athletes. Yeah, and they couldn't be more deserving. And it is exciting. Um, I was talking to Grant, our SID, and we were just kind of mulling over. Like, this is basically, for our sport, it's the Heisman or the, mm -hmm. the Naismith for basketball or, um, you know, one of those, the, the best pair in the country. And for them to have that recognition um, and to have honestly earned it, um, clear, clear winners um, was, it's humbling and it's exciting and for it to be the very first one and to know that when, anytime that list comes up from now on, you know, LSU and Taryn and Kristen are going to be the first ones that have ever done it. And that's a, it's a really cool deal for them and for the program. You know, I always enjoyed beach volleyball in the Olympics, like the Summer Olympics. That was one of the events that I love to watch. I like indoor, I love indoor volleyball. Sure. Uh, also in the Olympics. And when I think Olympics, and this is where you can educate me and everybody else. I mean, you think West Coast, uh, I know there's, you know, a, a very competitive in the Northeast. I mean, what is it like now to see the growth of, or am I being naive? I mean, has it been growing in the South and the Southeast for a long time? We just didn't pay attention to it. You know, I think that, um, 
you know, every four years when the Summer Olympic comes on, there's always a huge boom in interest with beach volleyball. It's one of the most exciting sports. Obviously, we've had some fantastic um, pairs from USA who've won gold and have kind of dominated that event, which always makes it more popular. Um, but then as college beach volleyball has come on the scene um, through the NCAA, I think that that's been able to sustain that excitement. And I believe the Olympic excitement is what kind of spurned on the, the, the initial growth, but the kind of relevance of the sport at the college level, the watchability um, and, the, and the growth at the college level is the fastest growing sport in NCAA history, um, has kind of accelerated the growth around the country at the youth level. So yeah. now you've got a youth boom and you've got the college growth and then I think you know even his summer heading in and having another uh, Olympic beach season to happen I think all of those things just continue to grow the sport not just um, in college or you know the pro level or the Olympic level but just in the public's perception and that's what's giving it renewed life and continued growth and it's an exciting place to be. I feel like we were on the front edge of that wave, but the wave is still strong and that's what makes it so fun. Well see this is why I love getting you in the car and you know it's 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 a little more laid back because you can teach me a little bit and I for, you know forgive me for my ignorance. Like I could sit here and tell you right now if you're looking for college baseball players, here's the, the hotbeds in the states to go. I can do that for college basketball. I can do it for football obviously uh, Louisiana's in the mix for all of those. Where is the hotbeds when you when you pull the map up and you go, okay, this is where we got to go see some potential student athletes. Where is that at today? Yeah, I think you can't ignore um, the history that you know the West Coast, the LA area has up and down the coast, even in California. Um, it's it's just tough to you know catch up to the kind of heritage of the sport that's there. Florida obviously has beaches all over the place and they've grown up playing the game. Um, but the but the growth has allowed for these pockets to pop up and individuals to pop up all over the place. If you look at our roster, um, you know, we have some Florida kids and um, we actually, you know, have a couple uh, Southern California kids, but for the most part it's I mean you can't you can't even pinpoint um, where we're getting, you know, our best players. If you look at Taryn and Kristen, you know, at the top of the heap, they're, you know, South Dakota and uh, in New Orleans. Like, you, you can't even, like, why would you even start there? And then our Similar two, places, obviously. Yeah, so, yes. two, our two pairs, both Arizona kids. I mean, it's just, you really can't um, pin it down. Threes are uh, local New Orleans area and uh, in a Dallas area. So it's, you know, there isn't necessarily a, you know, a, a spot where you can guarantee that you will or you won't find recruits. And that's what makes it so exciting because they're all over the place now. You know, it's interesting because I grew up in Eastern Kentucky, coal mining country, mm. right there where you can get to Tennessee, West Virginia and Virginia within 20, 30 minutes driving time. And over the last 10 years, I have a good family friend that they got into volleyball, indoor volleyball, and by extension, eventually outdoor volleyball, sure. beach volleyball, which there's no beaches in Kentucky, obviously. But the growth of the sport overall, I mean, they have a thriving volleyball community now, starting with seven-year-olds, eight-year-olds. They have leagues, and they get into you know the middle school leagues and then the high school leagues. And I'll be honest, you know, I'm not going to date myself, but there were no such things. We played volleyball, you know, at, at school, but it wasn't a sanctioned sport. They didn't have teams. And now it is, it, it's exploding. Yeah. And uh, so I know for you, that's got to be exciting because I can tell you, population 750 in 2010, my hometown has a thriving volleyball community. That's, so that's great news. Oh, for sure. That's exciting. <laughs> and I do think, and you mentioned it earlier, I think that volleyball indoor volleyball and beach volleyball they're great sports to watch they're oh, really yeah. exciting and um the popularity of indoor volleyball only lends to the um you know the appreciation of beach volleyball and honestly i think even the whole COVID situation there's you know it's obviously a challenging um time in our lives but last summer 
when nobody could train indoors, a lot of players went outside. They went out to the sand courts because um, you know there's a little more freedom out there. There was a little more safety, um, and so all those indoor players. And when their club seasons got cut short, they just kind of spilled out onto the sand courts. And <laughs> once again, like another growth opportunity for our sport. And and that's where it starts. I mean, people start indoor because that's just what young girls do when they start to play sports is they play indoor volleyball but it's it's a very close relative from a skill perspective so it's an easy transition to go outside and do something fun and some people just love it and that's where they stay and some people go back and forth and some people are like man that's too hot and sandy I'm gonna stay inside but um, I think that that last summer was a big uh, opportunity to even expose more talent to our sport. We'll put this in your file. My nine-year-old is playing volleyball this summer, so she's pretty fired up about it. So, uh, you Love know, it. not asking any favors, no. but we'll, we'll check back in with you in about, I don't know, six years or so. I, I love See it. See where we are. Hey, Kristen was, uh, when she started to be recruited, the, one of the first conversations I had was with her brother, who I played with and against in the sand. And he's like, hey, I got a little sister. You're going to want to watch her. <laughs> sure enough, he was right. Well, he, he certainly did have an eye for talent, that's for sure. So let's talk about it. You mentioned it. Um, you still get out there on the sand and still uh, get out there and knock the ball around a little bit? You know, I enjoy it. Most of the time now it's in practice. I haven't played a tournament in a little while, but, uh, you know, it's it's a, a lot of fun. Um, it's a sport that, you know, even as you look at, you know, mangoes and, and the oasis, like there's people play it like all the way through yeah. you know it's a it's a popular sport among the adults so there's there's always a an opportunity to get in the sand there's always plenty of invitations to participate um, and I do really enjoy being able to still um, you know knock the ball around with the team and and uh, you know maybe challenge them in ways that some other teams are going to challenge them with a little bit of extra heat or a little bit bigger block and um, and that's a fun part of the coaching experience for me. Well, I know you're not gonna you're not gonna be honest with me, and I, and I and I can appreciate that. But I gotta imagine you're pretty mean on the sand playing some volleyball. Like you probably can bring bring some of the heat yourself. I'm definitely on the downward trajectory, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it, there's still a little bit left in the tank when we need to, you know make a statement what other hobbies do we got when we're not you know when you don't get a chance to play volleyball and I know I talked I've, I've had several coaches in the car and I know there is no off season. it is 24 7 365 but I, I think that they give you a little or maybe a couple of windows to to spend time with the family sure if you're not playing volleyball watching volleyball recruiting volleyball thinking volleyball where are we gonna find coach Brock where well, are you gonna be if I get really lucky and the weather holds off, you would have a good chance to find me on the golf course. Oh, all right. I love to swing the sticks and trying to work on my game, uh, you know, get some insight from, from our golf coaches occasionally to kind of tweak my swing a little bit. Um, but that's really a passion of mine. And once again, something that I can do when the vertical completely goes away <laughs> and the arm swing is really, really tired, then I can continue to play golf for a while. And then, you know, when I don't have as much time, I, I really enjoy, you know, working in the flower bed and, and, <laughs> and taking care of, uh, got a good selection of plumeria that, uh, that I really enjoy. And uh, I just love to, to see things bloom uh, on my Instagram. A few times a year, I'll have a bloom report. Oh, nice. And I'll just take pictures of everything that's kind of blooming and, and share them. And it's just something I've always appreciated. You know, it's interesting because I've got a little little box garden. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm, I haven't ventured into flowers yet. Um, but I am, you know, vegetables and fruits. Sure. And I really enjoy the fact that it, 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 usually as busy as certainly you are, uh, and all of us are when you think about it, in our daily lives, you get a couple of moments to go out there. I think people may not realize how really rewarding it is to go out there. And I tell people all the time, it's it's me and the tomatoes, you know? Right. And they don't talk, they don't interrupt me, right. they don't stop my sentences. <laughs> and you know, it really gives me a chance. I use it almost therapeutically to just kind of slow down and sometimes think about what's coming up and what I want to do. Yeah. Um, haven't tried it with flowers, but I imagine probably works the same it is the same it's it's really similar you can't eat them so you know, yeah that's the downside yeah. but 
man, they are beautiful. And, and even, you know, looking to find as you, you know, kind of shop around when you're at Lowe's or Home Depot or go to some of the stores around town, that, um, you know, to look for something unique, something that you don't see very often. And you might even be driving around like we are and you see something blooming and you're like, oh, that is beautiful. Like, I'd love to try and cultivate that. Um, and to learn more about it and it, it is it's like you say it's that quiet getaway space where you know you're rewarded with the effort you put in by getting to see something really beautiful and oftentimes unique and and that's just something that, that uh, kind of brings me peace what do you love about Louisiana I mean again you, you you were more close to it than I was again growing up in the mountains of Kentucky um, and then the coastal area of Georgia a little similar for the 10 years I was there but what do you love about the state? What do you love about Baton Rouge? Well, Beyond yeah, LSU. For sure. I mean, obviously, you, you have to love LSU. Um, the purple and gold all over is, is so unique. And I think that, you know, being involved in college athletics and going to school, like, there's no place like Baton Rouge as far as when you're walking around, you just see LSU everywhere. Yeah, I I've always told people if you fell out of the sky, you would know you were near LSU if you landed in Louisiana. That's right. And, you know, all other places I've had have, have great followings, but it's almost like you get excited when you'd see somebody in that gear because you're like, oh, hey. <laughs> and now if you did that, you'd never get anything done because you see people every day, all day. Yeah. So I think that's definitely one of the top things. But, I mean, even as we're driving around, I mean, I love these oak trees you know I love the uh, the cypress I think that those are things that speak to me um, I also if I had a choice I'd always choose heat over cold yeah and, I'm with and it and that's a great mm -hmm. spot to be um, the people um, you know the friendly uh, engaging and once again I think part of it is that everybody's all in um, for what we do um, and if you do it well then they're even more excited about it so um, the support, um, you know, the family atmosphere. I mean, all of those things really remind me of home. There's a lot of similarities. Um, and so, you know, the azaleas blooming in the spring when you're driving down Highland Avenue. It's all of those things that like feel like home, but also are really special to this space as well. All right, so if you're not playing golf, you're not working on another NCAA run for beach volleyball, um, and you're not with the flowers in the garden, right? Like uh, random Thursday night at home. What what are you doing? Do you cook? Do you do you do you cook or do you eat or do you do um, both? Um, I don't. I would say probably I would do more of the eating. Um, <laughs> I, I typically get to help out a little bit, and I do enjoy. So a sous chef, um, you're a sous chef. Yeah, yeah, sure, we can go that route. Okay. Um, and then you know we've got if it's in the summer. Uh, my oldest daughter it just finished her second year of college oh. and so she's now home with us and she does a great job helping out so we'll hang out. My uh, middle daughter actually got married in January so she and her husband will come over quite a bit. Thursday might be a good night for them to visit and have some dinner and play some games and then my youngest son um, is finishing up his sophomore year of high school and so we might be you know catching a little episode of The Voice, or maybe <laughs> watching a movie, or playing some games, just having dinner, or getting some homework done, helping out pitch in with that. So, you know, it's a it's a pretty typical, uh, you know, just regular old home home life. I gotta tell you, and I hope you take this as a compliment. When you just describe to me your children, their ages, and where they are in life, you do you realize that you you come off, you look. Man, you're blessed because you look like you're you're stuck in your mid twenties, man. If you'd have told me that, like I didn't look at your birth date, I didn't look at your education years, but that really stuns me, man. Well, Bless I, you. I you're, appreciate you're, that. I, I you obviously I, are taking care of yourself as well, opposed to me, so I understand. <laughs> well, I do. I, obviously, I have to thank my parents. Got some good genetics. Yeah, you uh, did. My grandma actually um, is. Uh, she'll be ninety nine this year. Wow. So, you know, there's. I can't take all the credit for it. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's some, uh, there's some good genes along the line. There ain't no doubt about that. There is no doubt about that. All right. So, again, we said from the outset. You, I mean, like you arrive, the program starts, and then boom, it takes no time. That LSU Beach volleyball. When you think college volleyball, I mean, they're there. Uh, you're up there with, with again, the, the traditional powers, geographical powers, mm -hmm. suddenly LSU's on that map. If you look 
five years into the future, maybe even 10 years into the future. Heck, looking at you, you we could probably talk 30 years <laughs> into the future. You'll still be coaching here. Trying um, to catch Didi. <laughs> that's right. I think you got a shot. <laughs> um, what, what, do you, what do you want? Where, where, where does this program go? I mean, obviously, you're going after uh, you know, wins and, and championships, but where do you want to see the program go? And then you could look back and go, you know what? Because right now, it's without question, you will leave it better than you found it. Sure. But for your standards, where do you want to, to see it down the road? You know, I think that um, there's a lot of things, I think, in my mind um, that, that I'd love to see happen. I, I, you know, we talk about Dee Dee. I think how she changed the understanding and the culture of the city with her program. Mm -hmm. Like, um, And I know that we've begun that process, but, you know, to pack that stadium out, you know, every time we're at a home event and to have people um, just be excited to, to, that, you know, beach volleyball season is coming. I think that that's, you know, on the horizon and, and we owe it to this community to continue to put out a good product so that that's something exciting to do. You know, when you're thinking about what do we do on a Friday night and, you know, March, it would be hopefully we can get tickets to go see beach volleyball if we can, if we can find a seat. Um, I think that's one thing. You know, we still haven't. Um, really done anything um, concrete in you know the championship format we haven't won a conference championship we haven't won a national championship so those things are still out there waiting for us to um, to accomplish and then you know really if you're talking about the legacy of our program those things are all great but you know my hope is that we keep graduating players who will continue to be great role models and great mothers and great aunts and great sisters and um, you know great CEOs and and people who you know when when they mention that they happen to play for our program that it always sheds light on who our program is because of their excellence um, and we've been really blessed to have had that opportunity moving forward and you know in our brief history but you know, that's, that's what I want our legacy to be, is that we've got people all over the country um, who are making a difference once they leave. No uh, question about this it. campus. That's, I mean, that's, that's ultimately what, what you're looking for, is that people, you know, get to know somebody on a, on a business level or a friendship level, and then they go, wow, you played beach volleyball at LSU, as you say, it immediately, you know, rises helps raise the, the profile of not only the beach volleyball obviously but but the university as a whole I mean sure. that's kind of what we're all supposed to be shooting for so you guys have come out of the gate you're 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 a power to be reckoned with now does that and you got your new facility does that help or hamper your ability to go schedule some of the other powers to come to Baton Rouge is it is it easier now or do they think wait a minute I don't know if I want to go into that uh, tiger den so to speak you know it's fun I think that the top of the heap for our sport um, the coaches and the programs they want that challenge like there isn't anybody who's like oh man I don't want to go to LSU <laughs> because it's tough to play there and we might lose like they like the match we played against UCLA, Stein Metzger is their head coach, and I played against him in, in college on the indoor side of things. And so we were talking. The match wasn't even over yet. We had won because we won the twos and clinched the duel, but the threes were still playing, and we were just standing there talking. And he, he said, uh, like the first thing he said to me is, hey, man, we want to come back. Like they, Like our kids love playing here. Like there's no place like it. And I think that's the, the beauty, one of our sport, is that the coaches at the highest level they want those challenges like they want the, the best challenge and the most exciting um, locations that they can possibly get uh, and then the other thing that helps us is there is no place like our stadium mm -hmm. no matter where you go you can get on a nicer beach yeah we're obviously not on a beach so any beach is nicer than no beach um, if you're comparing beaches but as far as the facility and the bleachers and the capacity and the energy and the lights and the sound system and the scoreboard there's no place like it so it's really unique um, it's a great atmosphere and so like I said when you are in those coaches at those top teams and even the teams that you know aren't the very top of the heap people want to play here and that's once again a, a huge blessing and 
Um, we couldn't be more grateful that TAF decided that this was a, a product worth investing in at that point because at that time we weren't really that great. Like we were better than nothing, <laughs> um, but they were committed um, to helping us get where we believed we could go, and um, and they did, you know, as much as we could possibly ask, and that's paying dividends. And I got to believe part of that, and if not all of that, was the vision that you gave, and and and, and just. For, for those people to be around your student athletes because I've been around them and their tenacity and passion for the sport I think you, you can't help but be around it and think you know what this thing is about to take off this rocket is about to take off which leads me to my next question which everybody wants to know we've talked about the, the great pairs that you've had over the last couple of years and the run you've had um, we kind of talk about it in every other sport I mean are we to the point now where we're not rebuilding, we're reloading. What does the coach say going into uh, next year? Yeah, well, our message to our team, you know, even as we stood in the sand after we were done, we gathered the girls who were returning and we said, look, there's gonna be people who think we're gonna be down. That's not our perspective. Like we know what we have and we know we've got coming in and our objective is to be right back here next year competing for this title. So I think if you have to choose reload or rebuild, um, it's a combination of both. We are going to reload and we're going to use that, those new players and our current players who were in the lineup to rebuild and it'll be different, but it'll be just as powerful and just as exciting and we'll have just as much of a shot to compete on the national stage as we did with this unbelievably talented uh, team. What is what is a Coach Brock off season? What does that what does that consist of for for individual workouts and and the, and the discipline that it takes to, to make sure when it's time for teamwork again, everybody's ready to go. Yeah, the one of the challenging things about our sport, but one that's also pretty um, fun, is that when we shut it down in May until we start it up in middle of August, we can't have anything to do with their training. So what we always tell them is you're going to make a statement when you come back. Um, everybody will. It'll either be a good statement or it'll be a challenging statement and you want to be on the good statement side so they know what they need to work on. They all go back to their to their homes or their home courts or their home beaches and and or they stay here and they train in our facility on their own and with our strength staff and um, but but really we have to trust them to carry forward and to hold each other accountable um, that when they show back up in August, that we're going to be ahead of where we are right now. And that's part of the formula um, for a team that can continue to grow um, is that they have the self-discipline and the accountability to, uh, to continue to get better as they um, are technically off. You want to see something fun? Oh, yeah. See how much stroke we have here. All right, let's see what happens. Yeah, I'm delivering our top beach volleyball coach back to his office. Is that cool? Okay. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See? Yeah, Look at yeah, there. Every once in a while. A little name we'll get dropping. You, get you on campus. A little name dropping never hurt anybody. No. Hopefully nobody sees this and tries it again, although you do have to have the guy in the vehicle with that you. That usually helps. <laughs> but I like the fact. Hey, I, you know, I'm going to come back, commend that young lady on protecting our campus, making sure there's no vehicles that don't need to be here. That's and, right. And uh, also thank her for letting me get back in. So uh, the summer, what does it look like for you? I know we talked about your hobbies, but what's, uh, I mean, are you recruiting or watching yeah. video? What are, you, what are you doing for the next several months? Well, once again, COVID impact, we had no recruiting for yeah. the last, you know, year and a half. So, you know, as we head into the summer, we're gonna start camps um, in, in June, we'll have four camps, little two-day camps that are commuter camps that we'll have in our stadium um, through the course of June, and we'll sprinkle in a couple recruiting trips along the way, and then July is a will be a big recruiting month. Um, Coach Katie and myself will both be out all over the country, you know, trying to find some baby tigers to, to come <laughs> and join the program. All right. Well, you know, one thing about being on campus is there's uh, always construction. That's true. And uh, one thing I wanted to make sure this guy knew is that I was coming behind him because <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not sure he knows I'm here, which I think I can sneak by, but I don't want him to put it in reverse. So I'll well, tell you what. don't hear that backup beeper. Yeah, I think we're good. I think I'm going to sneak by. Yeah. And then I'm going to yes. break the law and go through the wrong end because I got to get you back to your office so you can get back to work. Coach, I've appreciated you taking some time out. I know the last several weeks have been uh, extremely busy, but um, you know it's nice to, again, get to know you a little bit better, talk about your program a little bit, find out what you do when you get away from the office, when those rare moments occur, and uh, maybe we'll do this again real soon. And you didn't seem to mind. All the other coaches, they want to know why they don't get to drive. You seem pretty laid back. Just let me do the driving. Yeah, occasionally, you know, it's nice just to sit on this side of the car. Don't get to do it very often. <laughs> Coach, congratulations on Thank everything, you. man. It's I been a pleasure. It. Enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the summer. Absolutely. You too. All right. I'm going to. A big thank you to Coach Brock for taking some time for a cruise. And as always, thanks to BMW for a chance to take the all-new and still iconic BMW 530i out for a spin. A reminder, you still have time to get to your local BMW dealer and test drive any of their vehicles, and you'll be entered for a chance to win a one-night, two-day stay at the BMW Performance Center in Greer, South Carolina, along with some great LSU and BMW swag. It's your chance to have the ultimate driving experience in the ultimate driving machine. Thanks for riding along with us, and we'll see you next time on Cruising with Coaches.